All right, if you had a dollar for every time you've heard some sales guru say the money's in the follow-up, you probably wouldn't have to follow up, right? And using AI to follow up is actually pretty easy. Uh, just piecing together some workflows here. I'm gonna put this out as a snapshot for all the users in the school community, um, but I wanna put some reps behind it so I you know, wanna see it work and tweak it and refine it just to make sure it's really, really good for you. Uh, but I thought I'd show you what I have going on so you can replicate it and either test it alongside me or add your own spin onto it. So let's go to the screen, easy enough. I'm gonna show you these two workflows. So how happy would your client be if you had AI following up all the time, right? Kind of a huge thing. So I'm gonna show you how to use a recursive workflow in high level. Recursive workflows are so powerful. It doesn't matter what system you're using. All right, using Go High Level, you're using BuildShip, you're using um, whatever you're using where workflows are involved, recursive workflows, uh, make things like follow up possible, right? So uh, in Go High Level, we have to remember two things. One, a contact cannot be in the same workflow twice. And uh, you know we can use some of the actions there to format the last time um, that we spoke with them so that we can build really customized follow up. I'm going to show you to do that with the context action too. So we're going to need two workflows, one to catch when someone replies to us and one to actually throw, it's goofy names, throw out uh, a follow-up and I'll show you how to automate that in like a randomized format to make it seem uh, even more randomized than usual. So it uh, it's not going to be deterministic. It'll be um, you know random intervals of follow-up intermittently with SMS and you can even throw calling in there if you want to. I'll show you how. So given those, those ideas of or a, a contact can't be in the same workflow twice, right? That's why we're using two. So we have one that catches whenever someone responds to us and it's just capturing the last time that they spoke with us. So this is all this one is doing, right? So we have a customer reply. I haven't any, the context injection for right now is just SMS. So you can filter by SMS if you want to. Um, and I'll make it to where you can do multi-channel, just making it a little bit easier on you. But right now this is just kind of built for SMS. I'll have the stuff for other channels in the future. I guess you can say calling is a part of this too because you can add a call, but nonetheless, okay? Someone replies, we're catching that with a go high level workflow trigger. So every time somebody replies to us, no matter when, where, how, what, when, it's getting caught. It's going into this workflow, right? Customer replies, customer replies, customer replies. It's coming into this workflow, but we're not done here. There's the second one to actually do the follow-up itself because of the idea that the contact can't be in the same workflow twice. That's why we have this one to catch it and send it off. Uh, and I'm gonna show you how that works. So uh, someone replies, we're starting this workflow. As soon as they reply, we're gonna update a field. I have a custom field here just saying the last contacted date, and this is a date field. I'm just saying this is the last time we heard from them. And this is going to every time a customer replies any channel, we're just gonna have that save. This is the last time they talked to us because we can store that later. It's also good for metrics tracking because you can do campaigns based on the last time somebody contacted you. If you're not doing this, I'm sure there's a go high level stock field for it, but I just do it in a custom field. So every time somebody replies, I'm saving that date in which they did reply to us. All right, I'm removing them from that second workflow. We'll get to why here in a second, but we're just gonna remove them out of there, right? If they're already in there because they can't be on there twice. We're gonna wait just a second to make sure that's all good clear, and then we're going to add them back in. It may seem a little redundant, but remember this is a loop, and so every time they come in, remove them, add them back in, remove them, add them back in, remove them, add them back in. Why do we do that? I'll show you. So then we have throw, again, goofy names. You can name it whatever you want. Uh, I'll probably change it by the time it comes out as a snapshot, but this is just what I have here. All right, this looks a bit like a spider web. It's really not that complex. And so what I'm doing here is so like every customer reply comes in there, right? This is every customer. This is paying people. This is leads. This is even internal people, right? So that's not super great. However, uh, we do have a little catch in the beginning here that's just saying, is this an AI lead? Like, is this a person that I would like to book an appointment with or is this somebody else? If it is somebody I'd like to book an appointment with, I know that because I have my active tag on them, my, my AI active tag on them. If it is... We're just setting an if else here. So if they have that active tag, that's obviously somebody I wanna follow up with. And if they don't have that active tag, obviously it's someone I don't wanna follow up with, right? Super easy there in the beginning. That's how we filter out people. We don't want to receive this follow up and the people that we do wanna receive this follow up will catch it. All right, what are we doing after that though? So we, we have it every time that they've come in, we've marked the day that the last time they talked to us, right? And the way this is recursive and you gotta think about it in terms of like the conversation, right? There's cadence of a conversation. I talk to you, you talk to me. I talk to you, you talk to me. 
I send one out, customer replies, aka you, you come in, start this workflow. All right, I say something to you, then guess what? If you never say something again, you're stuck in this workflow for follow-up. However, if you do reply to me again, you'll be caught by the other workflow, which will take you out of this and then put you back in to restart the whole process over and over and over again, right? And the cadence of a conversation doesn't really change. Um, so now that we've filtered out all the people we don't want to talk to, I have this fun workflow action here. So this is a workflow split. So this is a random split. You can kind of set this out and you can do this as many as you want. You can do from five hours all the way up to 190 days if you wanted to. Who knows? Who cares? The world is your oyster and go high level. It's super fun, right? It's, it's the reason I geek out over it. I have it just set for five days. All right. Each one equally distributed. So that is random, right? There's nothing heavily weighted there. Everything, every time it goes in, there's a 20% chance it'll go here. There's a 20% chance it'll go here. Whatever it is, randomly distributed so that we're getting different days of follow-up, right? And it's super randomized. It's not deterministic at all um, because I would love to be able to put like a, a variable in the wait time here, but we're not there yet, I guess. So uh, we're just going to do a random window split here. So I'm just going to take you down one of these paths because one of these paths does the same thing as all the rest of them, right? Just different wait times. And those are all divvied out by this, right? We have it one day, matches one day, matches one day. And you'll never believe what's on the two day. Two days. I can't even go through the rest. It may be overwhelming. Um, but one day, we have a one day wait here with an advance window on business compliant hours, Monday through Friday, nine to five. Easy enough, right? Now, we don't want to follow up with people who have already booked with us, right? Uh, we may have not removed our tag. They still may be going through our appointment reminder workflows. They may be going through all that stuff, right? So we don't want to follow up with people, you know, in the sales type way of people who have already quote unquote converted to our call to action, which is booking an appointment. That would be redundant and that may lose business. So after this one day wait here, right? It's one day since we've heard from them, we're going to check, have they booked an appointment? <laughs> we're just going to sanity check ourselves here. It's not hard. It's just an if else action. And we're just saying, okay, have they booked? That's our if else. Yes is their last appointment is in the next 60 days. So it's not behind us. It's you can even do is is not empty for like leads if you want to. Yeah, leads may, you know, they may book and it depends on how your pipeline goes, but this is this is really kind of up to you. Mine is is may, I may have people who have booked with us in the past. Our leads keep coming back, our customers keep coming back. This is just in the next 60 days. If I have something with you in the next 60 days, I don't need to follow up with you because I have an appointment on the calendar. Um, however, if this condition is not met, the uh, else part of if else, uh, which is no, meaning they do not have an appointment in the next 60 days, we're going to follow up with them. So you see that broken down here, right? Do they have an appointment booked? Yes, they do, meaning they have an appointment in the next 60 days. Take them out. We don't need to follow up. You see how there's catches for all this stuff? Even if, if, even if there's a conversation still going on, if they're not getting caught by the tag, but they have an appointment booked, so our call to action, whatever, right? They're still getting taken right out. Now, in this one, um, wait one day, compliant hour, they don't have anything booked with us. What we're going to do is, you remember when we stored the last day that they contacted us? We're going to compare some dates. This is an awesome workflow action to go high level where we can compare two dates, which is their last contacted date to today. And we can get the difference, right? So if it's been one day or if it's like, you know, we've done this a few times, right? And, uh, you know, this thing's ran through it five times, randomized, it's been 15 days. Then we'll say the last contacted date, because the last time they ran through that last workflow was the last time they contacted us. It'll calculate out 15 days. So the AI is fully aware of how long it's been, right? So we're just doing a little compare dates there so we can get a time frame for this AI to understand how long it's been, right? And then we're just feeding that in as context. If you don't know what this context workflow is, what this does is this feeds context to the AI. You can inject this as data. You can inject this as instruction, whatever here, right? And it just feeds it to the AI for it to be able to generate a response. If you do just a blank one or if you do something silly, like, you know, reach out to contact, then it's like, it, you know, it's like talking to a human. If you walk, if you were to walk down the street and tap somebody on the shoulder, say reach out to contact, go, what? It's kind of how AI reacts. So you got to give it context. You got to give it a task. And the context here is the user has not responded to your last message. It has been the difference of days, 15 days. As a sales representative, it's your responsibility to re-engage leads that have not responded. So we've kind of set the context and we've set the tone for its job, right? 
And then we're just saying your task is to generate a message to follow up to the user to restart the conversation. Easy enough, right? You can always make this a bit more robust. This is the bare minimum, I would say, though. Super, super easy. And it's in full context of how long it's been since the last time we've heard from them. Whether it's one day, whether it's one year. It will, it will do the comparison of the dates. Super cool, right? All right, and once that's done, what this does is this sends that context to the AI, almost injects that instruction, injects that context, and then generates a response. And so once this hits, this will basically send over to the AI and say, hey, this is happening, do this. The AI will say, okay, great, respond. And then, um, you know, if the lead responds and this whole thing sets over, right? Uh, but if not, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna restart which is just a go-to action. This goes back up here to this workflow split. Again, randomly randomly selected, and it may go down three days, right? So three days from now. All right, have they booked? Yes, take them out. If they haven't booked, all right, compare the days since the last time you talked to them. So now it may be 21 days. All right, and we're saying, okay, they haven't responded to your message. It's been 21 days. As a sales rep, it's your responsibility to re-engage them, generate a message to restart the conversation this is my assistant ID. And then once they've done that, restart it all over again, randomly distributed, right? And we're going to five days. Hell, it may go back to three, who knows? But it's just gonna be randomized. There's not gonna be a cadence. It may, th you know, it's thrown off the contact to where it doesn't look like a, a very, very strict campaign, whatever. And this is gonna to continue to go on until one, they book the appointment. Two, they don't have your active tag on, meaning they're probably done with the sales process. Um, and and that's, that's about it. Everything else will just kind of pass through and you're good to go. So uh, I'll release this as a snapshot after I torture test this because I may be missing something here. You may want something a little bit more rust, uh, remote, robust and you may be able to do some other cool stuff. Not to mention, you be able to you know put a call action in here too. And you can do the same thing with a call with a custom variable. Uh, so we make an AI call. We can put in custom variable one. It has been yada, yada, yada. You just copy and paste that. Give them a call, right? Easy enough. This is what that looks like and it's recursive. So even if we're on follow-up, you know, number three, in the lead response, this whole thing starts over again. We have our last contact to date. The conversation started back over, and this works 24, 7, 3, 6, 5, baby, all day, all year, during compliant hours, though, if you're watching High Level Twilio. Um, but during compliant hours, and only for the people we wanted to. Super, super fun. This is how their forever follow-up work. This is an easier way to do it. Really hard to mess up. Um, I'll put it out as a snapshot. Maybe I'll put this out uh, in there, too. But you should be good to go. That's how you create a recursive workflow that constantly works all the way through, uh, considering that contacts cannot be in the same workflow twice. This is how you divvy it up into two so that it's constantly following up. It's forever following up until your call to action. Hopefully that's helpful.